Our next speaker is Tammy Lister. Tammy is a product designer that works on the WordPress project. She's passionate about open source, experience design, and tea. Tammy is going to share what's in store for global styles within the block editor. This is another peek into what's coming and how you can take advantage of and contribute to the power of the block editor. Let's welcome Tammy. Thank you. So before I dive in uh, really into what's in the works, I want to take a little step back and see why there is a need for global styles and then go into what has happened so far. So first of all, why? Well, this, this is a common user story. It's almost an assumption that you can use CSS that everybody knows CSS, of course. We even have custom CSS in the customizer. But thinking someone can just add CSS or even custom CSS is actually discoverable is a pretty big steep mind mountain. Being able to adjust, create that design you visualize, that idea you have and just make it fit perfectly. This should all be achievable by as many people as possible as easily as possible. So blocks have styles. These are powerful tools that can change things from text color to backgrounds. You can add a gradient, you could align, you could change the font size. This is just the block though. What if you could set styling globally? You can in a lot of themes and this is something you really could be able to do within the editor. And that's where this comes in. And even better, if the theme could also have access to these, think of all the possibilities. So lots of other experiences and products have global styling. It's pretty standard, from Wix to Weebly to Squarespace and many, many more apps. These are just some of the inspirations that I found. For example, if you think about the way that Figma even works and all these illustration tools, they're great fuel. And one of my favorites is the way that often drawing apps or note-taking apps on mobile take these really complex global styling and distill it down into usable, uh, real comforting and welcoming interfaces to use that you just want to explore and you just want to play around and create that perfect visual that you had in your mind. So creating a theme is creating an experience. You want to be able to translate that into the blocks themselves to influence and to shape them. Themes should be able to have art direction and dictate that and guide what could happen with the content within those boundaries. In considering the flow of styling, this is really, really key. How can what is default stay that way? And how can themes elevate block styles? WordPress has a powerful ecosystem and long-standing tradition of themes being able to respect that, elevate that, and combined with the power of the block editor, that's really going to be unlocking potential. That's when a styling system can come into its own. So there's a need for global styling. And the next step is working out how that should work. And there's a lot of complexity here. There's many, many levels. If you think about uh, how different styling interacts, you have the theme, you have the block, or with really different styling. But how could this work as an experience? How could this work as a flow? So this process all began really both from a development and a design perspective, thinking about the structure and the flow and the experience. How was it going to work? What was that flow? And getting super simple about this, post-its in a wall always works really well for flows. And it gives a chance to really feel as much of this experience as possible. There are a lot of stages here. Just look at all those arrows and the different directions. It's like a choose your own adventure experience. And this is really important because every single one of those arrows can be a hitch in the flow, could be a problem for the user to experience. And ensuring this all works as expected and easily is really, really key to keep that flow and keep that experience. There is, as I said, the element of what happens in the theme as well. You expect a certain level of control as a user, but there's also a level of control that a theme has. Within the WordPress ecosystem, we expect themes to do certain things. There are mental models around the way they behave. Any global styling system has to be empathic to those and not go against them. 
A simple visual began to form along how this could work for the three different levels of styling. Global styles, the top level over everything. The document styles, this is like painting a section of your site, just styling that one particular room a particular way. And then block styles, this is just block specific. The flow of styling hierarchy is very much like CSS in many respects. Here you can see a demo of how this might work and props to Q for these next few demos that you can also find in these links. And I would encourage you to do that because by experiencing this, you start to kind of understand how this is going to come together. So it's pretty abstract in GitHub. As you can see here, you're changing something doesn't mean that everything else changes because we're respecting what you change. But how could this actually work and look like within a theme? Well, themes can offer defaults and styling that and then blocks have also access to them. Here is how this could kind of happen. And you see in the top corner, this little global styles with the ability to actually change font size as well. Again, if you follow this link, you can try this out for yourself. The block styling here is having its color changed. And then in a moment, we're going to go up and then we're going to change the font size. You can see that's how that changes. When styling, decisions are made. And potentially, you want to course correct those decisions. In terms of resetting, there's two different types of action. One is a more kind of nuclear, and it just resets everything back to defaults. And noting that a theme also can actually declare defaults in it itself. And then the more gentler, where you have undo and redo, just like the editor itself. And using this existing principle that we already have in the editor makes a lot of sense with styling. Maybe even later iterations, there's an importing function or something that could override everything. But just really thinking about what that experience is. After this process, the foundation and the how was a bit clearer for the flow and hierarchy. There was a lot of work to do underneath for development, and this work began. And along with that, design moved into a visualization stage, starting to think about what the interface could look like. Initial mockups kept the existing patterns within the editor, more or less, using the sidebar and the plugin hooks within the editor to add an icon. From this, a sidebar opened and it showed various options. A few explorations were done wider, perhaps as a modal, a drop down, or even a wider sidebar was also explored. And there was some diverging to converge back to a simpler interface that could be built up from. Finally, a prototype was made of what could be done, as you can see here. This isn't unexpected or new, really, with the patterns. There is a huge benefit in using existing patterns and building up from there. Iterating is always should be our approach. They are tried and tested for a very reason. And one thing to also note is this is starting to use the revised interface that's already been discussed earlier and will be discussed later. And this is an opportunity for global styling to sprinkle that in and start to elevate some of the interactions. This also, as you will see, is even more distilled later on in the version that we have today. But it's important to show at this point what was the thinking and trace through. So that's the why. And now let's catch up with what's been going on in the issue so far. I'm gonna share quite a few links within this discussion. You can follow along, but also at the end, I'm gonna share a link to my slide deck so you can catch those. So don't worry about trying to catch them all. As it all starts with the block, looking at ways to improve the tools around the blocks is a key step on the path towards global styles. First, it was important to see what tools blocks used that were common, and then how it made, kind of made sense to improve on that block, but also then from these to surface what would be good for global styling. One such tool that came up was line height. This simple adjustment really opens up a wide range of styling. For example, you can adjust to get that perfect height as you change fonts, or you can just adjust within that simpler and just really get that there. As a start, the simpler blocks are great for the paragraph block and really understanding how these little interactions and how they're gonna 
go. And then from there, from these simple blocks, we can build up to more complex blocks and start really looking at the more complex interactions. So power graph block is a great starting point for all our work. While I am talking about design tools, there's a great label to follow and some great explorations here, funnily enough, called design tools. And I would encourage you to do this because this is supplemental work that really will open up possibilities for you. Experimentation is how the boundaries can be explored as global styles work is happening. And I would encourage anyone to see what they can create, even if it's just at the start. The work Kel did in exploring global styles shows this. This is just one example of someone experimenting really early with this evolving work. So as I round up this section and this link heavy section of the story so far, it's important to share a couple of links because there is an overarching issue that lists everything that you can follow along, but there's also a project board and things move rapidly at times. So it's always useful to have some cornerstone places to return to and catch up on the work so far. The system has been built so that there is control by the site owner and theme of what's exposed, maintaining a great level of detail. So you can join in that discussion and all input is really needed at this point. So right now, Global Styles is in an early pull request. The design exploration phase for version one has distilled to a point where development is underway. It's worth saying, again, there's a lot of code and work underneath. I've kind of described this a little bit like an iceberg because that's what it is. You look at the interface and it looks kind of simple, but there's so much going on under there. So the interface is really that final piece of the puzzle. What is coming soon and what is there to get start exploring with now. The first version, as noted, has been distilled down to three kind of aspects, and that's the font and text families, the base font style, and the link styling. Whilst originally the diverging phase went really deep into a lot of different areas, it's important to focus now and get a version out because this is really going to be useful tooling. And putting in a release of WordPress sooner over later is crucial. To that point, you might be asking, when is this going to be due? Well, it's not slated for release yet, but the expectation is in this year. It is, in, as I said, in a pull request. And as that work intensifies, this is going to end up being in the plugin first. So you'll have a lot of testing and a lot of exploring opportunities if you're running the plugin. So here is what this could look like, the distilled version. Again, though, it's worth noting the interface is really iterating still. So what visually I'm showing may vary on release. A good way to think of this is showing you the tools in your Global Styles toolbox that may be available to you. The work, for example, done in block patterns also has heavily influenced Global Styles. As these are made and the boundaries found, what is needed is and will continue to surface. Some great work has been done there by people to really push what is needed and highlight the exact tools. So let's take a look at each of the global style options coming soon. First of these is the heading and text families. And this is a really useful way of check globally changing to get that perfect font combination. So this has a few options being explored. The simplest of these is just where you change the family. And note that the line height is also on both the text and heading. And there's a reason for this as the global line height is really needed to get that kind of general look, but if you want to get into those heading and that base, but being able to adjust as the font size goes up gets that perfect finite control. In the block pattern exploration work, it was shown how important that more granular control was. For example, if you have a large heading, keeping the global line height doesn't really work out so well for a visual experience and creates this kind of not so great experience. Link styling globally is a frequent request and that's coming soon too. This has a default link color, hover and active. These colors offered are either default or set by the theme. So if the theme doesn't declare anything, it falls back to some default ones within the editor. You can click one, pick another and swap it. There is also then the option to potentially reset everything back to the starting color. And this palette, and that would be either the default one that the editor would have, or that would be the default that the theme would declare. 
So being able to set a base font size and scale is again something most want to do. This is a pretty simple interface, allowing a base size that has a range control to change the scale up and down. The screen itself then reflects this. There is some conversation going on how this is actually going to look within the pull request. So again, I would encourage you to join in there. So all of this is super exciting, but I can almost hear you through the internet saying, what about a demo? And it's really, really important to note that this is very early. And I want to give a shout out to Andres, who actually pushed this forward so we could have this demo today, because I'm really excited to show it. And you can test it yourself in the pull request. It's worth noting that for global styles to work, the theme has to support CS variables today. But how this is all going to be implemented is currently up for discussion. So I'd encourage you joining in that. So here's the demo. Here you can see each element changes and reflects on the screen. For now, it's focusing on the typographical elements, but you can see and change sizes and scales, for example. And line height is here too, giving that finite control that you need to just get that perfect design. But what about next? I've shown you what's coming soon. What about the future? What could happen in later versions of global styles? And what are some of the extra ideas about this? I thought it could be fun to wrap up this talk and I'm gonna hopefully have plenty of time for questions at the end with some dreaming and some what ifs and share some other issues that you could follow along and join in discussion. What's the large motivation for global styles? It's put in part easeability and not actually someone having to touch this. There's going to be a need for many people to just be able to do that tiny little thing. And we should allow that by considering bringing in custom CSS to global styles. Uh, that kind of is something we should potentially to have discussions about. As full site editing and global styles matures, there is going to be perhaps a need to view all that is globally styled. Each component and variation is going to stack up. Another issue to surface is an exploring of the way that the view could change or you could have an option to change in global styles. Mosaic view is one of these such options. Perhaps you would see all your templates at once and then you could make changes seeing in a reflection in them as you're doing global styles. That would be a really cool interaction. So a bit of a disclaimer here. I'm going to put some ideas out there. And um, this project is just starting in many respects because there's so much potential of where we could go. Whilst this version one is in a pull request, where it grows and explores is open to everybody to join collectively here. And here are just a few things that I would like to share today. As shown, the first iteration of the interface is a sidebar, it's a pretty expected interface. And that's great because it uses an existing pattern, but this could change. What if it was a toolbar? What about other options that it could be? And it doesn't matter where this goes, perhaps, because it is a toolkit. And there's exploration for you here if you start thinking about where this could be useful and where it could lead to. Maybe someone can choose where they position it. And whilst decisions and options is a mantra, applications like Photoshop and Illustrator have shown when it comes to visual styling, being able to set your screen just so is really, really useful. And similarly, if you're styling content, being able to move this out of the way of the content is really going to be great. As you can see here, maybe by also selecting all of a particular block type, you could actually style those as well. That demo didn't run. I'm going to go back and run that for you. There you go. So basically what this is, it will multiply select those ones. It's not going to play for me. There we go. So we in from the drop down and then we select those. Another exciting potential could be to import or export global stars. Maybe they are shared. Maybe they are something you can share. There's a lot of possibilities in this. And maybe it's even something explored in the plugin first because that's an amazing part of this. It can all be extended and freely published beyond what it is today. So I would encourage you all to start thinking where you could take this in your own work. Because as everything starts by the block, 
taking time in all of this now and in the future to audit and iterate what blocks offer as far as both the interface and tools is crucial to this. It's then the things that would be great in global styles can really be surfaced. Along the way, we get better blocks, which is great, right? For example, the existing color picker works, but it could be so much better. Whilst this hasn't been set yet, being open to exploring is really, really interesting. And you can join along in the issue here. Coming back to the block means iterating by the block, what the block itself has. What we have today is just that it shouldn't be set in stone. It can, however, set the tone for the future and for not just global styles, but the experience of all of WordPress beyond the editor. So now is where we really need to think and consider that not everything needs to go where it does in the sidebar or by the block. For example, what about colors? When is that right to have things beside the block? When is it right to have them by the sidebar? By auditing, by exploring and iterating like this, creating new tools and refining old. A styling kit is refined and a world of possibilities opens. Global Styles is a small part of an incredible styling tools and an even smaller part of the amazing foresight editing coming soon and being available in WordPress. The question really comes down to what you are going to do and what you're going to make use of these things. What will you create in your themes? What can you extend? Where can you take these tools even further? How Global Styles is implemented and what happens next is up to all of us. So I encourage you to join in the discussion because that's how we make it the best for everybody, for themes, for users, for those you're looking to explore. Take this into your themes, style blocks and unlock the potential. Influence blocks through the themes you create using these tools. The seed of global styles has been planted. So I'd encourage you all to be brave, nourish that seedling and truly see what we can create collectively. This is how we can empower users to truly create what they've always wanted to in WordPress, what they always have visualized that they wanted to unlock the vision they have and saw. Thank you so much. Tammy, thank you. Sorry, I was uh, <laughs> fiddling with the video there. That was an excellent talk. Global Styles, you and I have talked about this so many times, how much we've just been excited to see Global Styles coming to fruition and becoming a part of Gutenberg. And your talk has gotten me even more excited about this. I can't wait to check out those uh, links on some of the experimentations that people are doing. Mm. But we have a Q&A uh, now with Tammy. Looks like I've got currently about four questions going on right now. So uh, if you don't mind, Tammy, let's jump into these. Yeah, I'm all good. Carolina asks, how will the font sizes work with the regular, small, large, and huge font size option that already exists? Okay, so... Now, this has been working out. I'm going to give a big banner over technical considerations that are still being worked out. But this is separate from your actual block itself. So what you're doing is you're styling holistically. You're styling across all of your site rather than styling the specific block itself. Nice. Okay. But you will, in your theme, be able to declare things. So that's something that Kel's experiment is showing. And uh, that's why, at the moment, it's using CS variables. So... There's lots of deeper kind of technical in that, but I'm going to kind of keep it at a, a level. And But I would encourage checking it out in the pull request because then you can dig into where this changes and then how this changes as well. Hmm. Okay. Next question I have here is, what do you think is the most impactful global style that users will actually take advantage of? So my, my answer has changed recently because I, I would have probably initially said um, the, the typography scale. And I actually think line height. Line height is like, right? like a, a little dark horse that's just creeped up. And because seeing 
the power by being able to just change line height. And initially, line height was was for everything. It was um, in, in the design explorations. It was for everything, and that was wrong. It's a lot better as soon as you put line height on heading and on the base font. That power is there to unlock. Um, yeah, so I would probably say line height is is a surprising winner so far. <laughs> How cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think line height is really being uh, done quite well as well. Like yeah. The UI and, there. and it wasn't, it was not something that you would necessarily like think of as the front runner for it necessarily. It'd be like colors or something, right? When you're yeah. talking about styling, it's always like color pickers and super exciting color things. <laughs> And I really think like seeing some of the patterns that people really have been creating mm -hmm. and experimenting with and yeah. messing with line heights there, just yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see, David asks, what are the plans for balancing need for fine tuned adjustments with sliders with suggestions? An example, here are three common line heights and try this heading line height with your global height. So using suggestions instead of sliders. So my initial thought is, I want to see that in a plugin. Like this is, and and that that's not like like I do. I want so many back at the beginning of Gutenberg. I remember there was like the hope of art direction, right? Um, and that was that was always something that was super exciting. And thinking about how um, themers could unlock that, and about how the user could also unlock that. Um, and that is where, to me, I would love a plugin to extend. And that's not that it won't be in the core product. It's more, I would want someone to just run with that idea because I think it's super exciting of, of a theme to extend it with a plugin or, yeah, the whole aspect. This is like a kind of like tiny seed of art direction in WordPress that, as a designer, I've always hoped there would be. And as someone that used to work creating sites more in WordPress rather than on the product side, I always wished I could have that for my clients. And now people have that potential. And I think it's going to be super exciting to be able to unlock that. Um, we have a new range control. So there, there's a lot of, the if the controls can't deal with that and the hooks aren't there, they should be. So we can get things like that through it's so how we push the boundaries, right? We don't know what we haven't done uh, until someone extends it and pushes those boundaries. So by pushing those boundaries and extending something like that, so I'm super excited about that plugin now. <laughs> Plugins are a great way to bring these into the, the interface, right? Yeah. It's a spam that I, I think sometimes we see, we get confined by what we see because we do, like it's WordPress, WordPress admin and everything. and there is so much to play with and so many amazing code toys and so much extending and boundary pushing that we can do within WordPress by and within the editor by extending things. And Global Styles just gives even more Lego bricks for you to play with and tools. That's why I kind of see it as a style kit. It's, it's kind of where my brain's going, this toolbox where you can dig in and take these things out and create these amazing plugins. And I'm very excited where all the ideas that people made for blocks, I could have never imagined. And I love when someone makes something, in particularly out of the editor, when that I'd never even thought of. And I can just see that people could do this. I'm very excited about that. Totally. Let's see, Anne asks, what should we consider for global styles? We have colors, font sizes, mm -hmm. and gradients registered in themes. How do they connect? Hmm. I'm gonna, that feels like a two question and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Anne. Um, so I'm gonna answer the first, what should we consider? And initially I considered pretty much the kitchen sink. Um, I, I was like, everything should be a global style. And that, that's not maybe the approach either, because that was me getting overly excited, which I do very easily. Um, and looking at the common things is a good way to, like, what is the common things we do across similar types of blocks? What are the things that people have problem doing in CSS 
those are the things that we need or what do we expect people to do all the time in CSS so we learn from like the .org support forums a treasure trove of information for things like that for WordPress of repeated snippets that people have to do um, and that's how we start kind of knowing what to do and the second part was how does it connect is that correct yeah how do they all connect yeah I mean pretty in-depth <laughs> everything's connected and within but if you go back to CSN and stack and I'm trying to work out where the connection comes in so again Mark if if I get course corrected during this please <laughs> feed that to me um for me the connection comes with people decide I'm going to take the the user experience connection word and that may be wrong but the way that it connects is by surfacing common needs we can then iterate into the styling. And I think that's really, really important. So by there being something that frequently people need to do, we then add that. If we take from a development connection, it's very similar to CSS is the best way I can describe it. There's a flow, there's a hierarchy, and it all interacts that way. I don't know if that very wandering ans answered your question, Anne, but I hope it did. That sounds right, Tammy. Thank you. We have another question from Teal asks, will there be a tool to expose all of the CSS rules present in theme, blocks, and plugins? Again, it sounds like a very exciting plugin. <laughs> I feel like I need to print a t-shirt. Because <laughs> um, it does, right? Like That sounds pretty awesome. It's, it's a pretty like power user thing, but I could see that could be great. This slightly ties into something that I've been kind of chewing on and everyone who's involved in Global Styles has been chewing on. It's like, how does, how do we visualize this? Because we can interact and we've got the slider and all, all our little control panels and all our toys, right? But how do we then know what we've changed? And how do we then interact that, uh, like see what we've done changes to and and that's maybe where mosaic comes in that's maybe where we have lists of styles and um, there's some template work that's going on that's super interesting where you would pan out and see all the templates laid out so yeah there, there's a lot but this is where i think these views and where the surfacing is enterprise are going to be experiencing this pretty early on and pushing that boundary but also just people with plugins it's like Every time a new feature comes in the editor, another potential for ecosystem of plugins comes, and that's incredibly exciting. And I can see that this is one of those. Art direction plugins within WordPress, I would like to see a forest of them um, in a good way, because then it really feeds back into what we can actually bring into core as well. Totally. There was a little bit of a clarification from it. Cool. Um, Thank you so, so much, Anne. <laughs> so, I mean, do we as theme authors have to register the same things in two places or these things automatically work together? So it depends if you use CS variables. Um, I, I've, there's a whole lot to get into here. I'm happy to give you some information, Anne, if you want to reach out afterwards, um, because it's a lot of kind of, uh, I'd be pointing you to the pull request and that doesn't feel that awesome of me. So what I would suggest is if you want to reach out, but also CS variables, uh, this um, powerful thing. And as soon as you start using things like that, then you can unlock a lot of this potential. I hope that helps. That's great. Um, let's see, Luke asks, if we wanted all posts within a particular category, to have a color different than regular posts. How should we handle that in light of global styles? That's the oh. first part. Second part, are we, building, <laughs> are we building this in a way where themes plugins can change those kind of styles? He adds, I'm wondering if we have thought yet about cascading global styles so we can assign a class to pages, categories, etc., so we can have subsets of global that that are bigger than a single page, but not full site. Oh, you're gonna have to bear with me on this, Mark. I might have to go back and ask I'm you a few things. Anything, <laughs> I'm running low on tea at this point. Um, so the first part of it was how could you affect all of one block? Was that like 
uh, uh, like a particular category of all posts, if we want ah. a particular category to have a different background color. So in theory, <laughs> um, yes, you would be able to do something like that, but not out of the box with Global Stars. And um, the reason why I say in theory is there's this query block coming. And I could see a kind of query block global stars mashup happening. She says, really putting her design hat on firmly at that point. Um, but I, you know, it's all, this is the thing to play with, right? If it's in there and the, the data points are in there and the hooks are in there and the, the toys are in there, pulling them out and connecting them, yes. Uh, again, this, this sounds very interesting as an exploration um to be able to do that it sounds pretty power level but it sounds very exciting power level as well i can see a newspaper or something wanting to do something like that yeah and, you, and there was more to that question there though. was yeah. <laughs> can we assign a class to a page or a category etc so we can have subsets of global uh, styles on a single so page. that would be more on the the code level there is an advanced class in every block so there's an event that you can add a class name to every block there isn't in global stars class name specific or this small it's almost like a global stars query builder it's kind of maybe that's another plugin i feel like i'm just saying it's a plugin but that's the kind of exciting thing of where you could push this a globe you know maybe that's what this is the combination of those things I can, this is the thing, it's so early that we're exploring these things. We've distilled it right back down to what's the, the minimum stuff that we are going to offer. And from here, who knows where we go? And that's the thing with what we've done with the editor, right? When we started it, it was like this, and now it's it's growing all the time. And every one of these features from block patterns to full site editing to global stars, they start off with these little tiny seedlings um, and then they just soar into these amazing trees and offshoots and then forests. Hmm. So I, I, you're, you're completely right there. Like we're so starting hmm. with just the bare minimum right now yeah. and where yeah. we go is going to be yeah. amazing. So Tim, Tim asks a question, <clears throat> mm -hmm. why make it possible at all for end users to adjust global styles? And he adds, mm -hmm. every client I've ever had, with the exception of maybe one or two, would make their sites worse if given that control. Why even open up that crazy bag of cats when <laughs> most users are not designers? Oh, crazy bag of cats are great to open up because it's fun <laughs> to watch. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think in seriousness, it's a point, right? Um, and as a designer, I remember I've all like for years i was very controlling about my design and it's like everything has to be controlled i'm the designer i dictate everything and the thing is we have so many ways to express ourselves and allowing someone to express themselves through their wordpress site is a powerful experience we, we can set boundaries we do that within the gutenberg plugin already um and the editor uh, we already say, if this color isn't accessible, we do a contrast check. Maybe that's something we do. Maybe that's something that as a plugin you could have. Um, as we look into more of this art direction, it's like, hey, have you thought papyrus? Or kind of all those kind of things, right? Um, there's, there's a way that we, I think we have to sometimes let people express themselves and i i think we do that through this within a safe boundary and what we're talking about isn't breaking the site we're talking about minimal personalization minimal styling at this point where we go from here is we have to have these conversations about does this break it does it make it not accessible does it make it not usable for people can someone not even read this now because someone's done something but that is all the way that we gently nudge with the interface and we become an advisor of styling and then themes have this art this quiet art direction that nurtures and i just think by doing that we are going to unlock potential in people and give them the way to really have the styling they want with their democratized publishing and that's powerful you know be able to have your site the way that you visualized it or have everything the way that you've done it 
And as a theme where I've restricted people before, I've been like, it's got to be my control. But it's like a level of different to that. It's expanding beyond that a little bit. I'm still creating the world. I'm deciding what Minecraft pack we're using, but I'm letting you build everything in that universe. So that was a bit of a tangent reference, but that's kind of what that's we're great, doing here. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I know I, I know. at the top I said we only had about four questions, but they keep rolling in, Tammy. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Jessica asks, I'm not sure if I have missed this, but when, mm -hmm. I got, but when I got that right, global styles are based on CSS variables. Has there been some consideration about how to deal with this in older browsers like IE11 that don't support CSS variable, variables? So the current state needs a CS variable theme. That's that's basically where we are now. Um, where we go from here is a discussion. I feel that's another thing I keep on saying because it's so early, we're having a discussion about where do we go? What do we do? So there is no decision as much as it just unlocks some potential. And then it's how we do. I, so I would encourage joining in those discussions. At some point, we have to look at a, a, what do we do? Where do we do? What do we support? Where do we do? But that is going to be a discussion that will be in the open, and that will be on those GitHub issues. Good point with that one. Uh, and Phil asks, this is the last one I have, Tammy. Would it be accurate to say that global styles should be thought of as default styles? That is, are global styles simply a base that is overridden at the block level? So when you say default styles, because the theme can also declare them. So uh, you, you kind of have default, <laughs> which is the editor. This is that, that awesome hierarchy square demo that you can click on. Uh, you have them there. And then you also have the global on top of it. So yeah, there is a hierarchy there. Could you repeat the last bit? You I'm bet. Sure I can uh, answer that, that is, are global styles simply a base that is mm. overridden at the block level? Yeah, so you will, the block is always going to be able to control it if you look at where the hierarchy. I would point to those demos because they really, when you start clicking, it's all very fluffy and ethereal. There was a better word than fluffy. It's all very like this, right? Um, there's, I'm saying lots of words and I'm showing pictures and I'm showing things, but there's something about clicking something and feeling it and interacting. So as you do that, you're gonna start to be able to be like, oh, so if this theme does this, this does this. Yeah. That sounds right. And that closes out our questions for today. Thank okay. you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.